Time for Hope has had the privilege of having many gifted and insightful authors appear as our guests through the years. We have decided to rerun from time to time some of our past shows related to subjects that did and will again give our viewers the opportunity to be informed and inspired to accept the challenges they are currently experiencing in their lives. With this in mind, we have chosen to rerun the following edition of Time for Hope. Welcome to Time for Hope. I'm Dr. Frida Cruz, your host. And as both a mother and grandmother, I want to make sure that we thrust the spotlight on moms and grandmas as we approach Mother's Day. I once presented a message to a church on Mother's Day titled, What Would God Do Without Mothers? Although I proved my point well, God did not choose to order His world that way, but instead chose to give women the privilege of conceiving and birthing those who would replenish the earth. Joining me today is Vice President and Publisher Emeritus of Thomas Nelson Publishing, friend and author Jack Countryman. Stay with us as we share from two of his books related to quiet times and prayer for mothers. And Jack, it's great having you back on Time for Hope. Well, thank you so much. It's such a privilege to be back with you, Dr. Frida. It hasn't been long since I saw you and uh, your wife, Marsha. We were at NRB together. That's and, right, uh, yes. Uh, so, but anyway, you've, you've uh, hit the jackpot again with these two <laughs> books that we're going to be talking about. I understand one of them is a bestseller right now. That's right. Uh, Time with God for Mothers has just made the bestseller list, and uh, we just feel so privileged to have that opportunity. and. Uh, you know, it's always nice to have a winner, isn't it? It certainly is. Uh, we uh, sometimes we get there little by little, don't we? But, That's right. Uh, yes, we, it does. Uh, the Lord gets us there. We're talking about mothers, of course. Uh, I've already mentioned that in the intro, and I have a few little things I want to uh, put out before we get started about sure, your books. Absolutely. It has been said that a mother's power for good is the strongest known on earth. A mother has in her power the molding of her children's character so that they may be fitted for a higher immortal life. An angel could not ask for a higher mission, for in doing this work a mother is doing a service for God. I think I thought that was just uh, those are uh, brilliant. Those uh, are wonderful. Yes, and then I wanted I went back and I started thinking about uh, we're going to be talking about first about uh, pray mothers praying, mm -hmm. and I thought about praying mothers uh, even in the uh, scriptures and in uh, church tradition. And the first one that came to my mind was St. Augustine, the early church father. You know, I, I discovered as I researched more about him that he is said to be probably one of the brightest individuals ever to have lived, uh, St. Augustine, the early church father. And it was through his mother, who was St. Monica, known as St. Monica at that time, through her prayers and the preaching of St. Ambrose that brought him to a knowledge of Christ. He was, uh, you, you know, he, he was bad. Bottom line, bad. His life, uh, he rebelled against the church, against his mother's teachings, against whatever. And, um, but he was Bishop of Hippo eventually after his conversion, and he gave credit to his mother's prayers. Uh, actually, when he left home to get away from her and her prayers, and she stood on the shore watching him go away, her priest was standing beside her, and he said, Monica, um, a, a son of so many prayers cannot be lost. Isn't that true? Yes. You know, oftentimes I think the mother is the anchor of the home. She's the anchor that draws the family together. There's so many times the mother is the one that nurtures the children, that watches over the children, that really watches over her husband, uh, creates the home atmosphere that uh, makes the home what it is and the family what it is. So the mother, in my opinion, is really the most important person in the family because she oftentimes brings love and comfort and uh, 
relaxation and makes everybody feel important uh, as uh, as she really guides the home. And praise behind the scenes. That's absolutely Very true. Often, yes. She doesn't have to have them in her presence when she's praying. Then I moved on to John Newton. Uh, no, I, most people know John Newton authored uh, the hymn Amazing Grace. Absolutely. No better known yes. hymn than Amazing Grace. Well, he was instructed at his mother's knee, and I'm sure her prayers uh, went with her instruction until he was seven years old and she died and he went astray. Um, but he was brought back into the fold uh, and came to know the Lord, but he gave credit again to his, the instruction he received from his mom, and I'm assuming her prayers also. You know, down through history so many times, the mother is the one that has been the guiding light behind the, the young men or older men that have, that have gone on to be great men for God. And she's the one that's, uh, you know, prayed oftentimes. Uh, Ruth Bell Graham was so important with her children. Anne and I have talked so many times about the influence that her mother had on her life as, uh, as she grew to be the great uh, person for God that she is today. And then we move on to Timothy. And remember what Paul said to Timothy about two, two women in his life. Uh, you want to share that? You want me to share it? Go ahead, you share uh, he sa uh, Paul said, I have been reminded, talking to Timothy, writing to Timothy, of your sincere faith which first lived, that's an interesting word, in your grandmother Lois and in your mother Eunice, and I am persuaded now lives in you also. That's right. That's pretty weighty, isn't it's, it? Yes, and they planted the seeds, the seeds that were nurtured through time that allowed Timothy to be the man of God that he became. And then one other. We can't forget Hannah. No. Back in the Old Testament, praying and just really in such distress over wanting a child and especially a son uh, that she could give back to the Lord. I read, I reread that last evening and it was just amazing what she went through and then that she was willing to give that son up. Uh, but it was pr her prayer and she prayed. Her, her Eli thought she was drunk. Uh, she was so carried away with praying uh, about having an, a child. And then even her husband agreed for her to give Samuel up uh, after he came, which I thought was really interesting. Well, oftentimes I think that uh, I've known I've, Marcia, my wife, has such great intuition that I don't have. And oftentimes I think God speaks through the mothers and through women in a way that men don't even understand. And uh, that's why they're such great guiding lights for, uh, as a helpmate to the husbands in life and, uh, and speaks to them. So that, uh, that doesn't uh, surprise me. And I think in, in a biblical character that just shines through. Then we move into your book uh, and prayer, and you say that your purpose in writing the book was to encourage a stronger prayer life for mothers uh, of all ages. We don't ever, once we're a mother, we're always a mother. That's uh, true. Uh, same with a parent, a yeah, father, it could be said also. So we never quit praying for our children. Well, you know, as a mother goes through life, she's faced with all kinds of, of obstacles and challenges, blessings and things. And what I tried to do with the 95 prayers that we developed within the book is to give her little seeds of things that she could pray about that would draw her into a deeper prayer life. Because I think of the two essential things that is God's Word and prayer, this conversation that is so essential to have with our Heavenly Father. How do we develop a relationship with our Heavenly Father without a conversation? And so what I try to do with the book is give little insights into things, into such things as confidence for a mother, or courage for a mother, or, you know, uh, emotional healing, because mothers have, you know, sometimes our children disappoint us. 
Sometimes our husbands disappoint us. Sometimes we have challenges and illness and things in life. And you know, and sometimes we need forgiveness. And so to have, I tried to give a stepping stone into a deeper prayer life for the mother where she might also find some more wisdom that she needs to do the things that are so important in her role as a mother. And uh, hopefully uh, I've, I've accomplished that. And hopefully that uh, as a mother reads the book and as she reads the prayers, that she'll be quickened within her spirit to go deeper with the Lord have a deeper relationship in her conversation with the Lord. And then maybe prayer will become a real important and essential thing in her life as she walks day by day, hand in hand with our Heavenly Father. You know, I like the idea that you first threw out uh, of talking with the Lord. Yes. He can become a constant companion. Absolutely. He's there at any time, anywhere. And you even mentioned about your books. They're small enough to stick into our purse, uh, yes. carry wherever we go. We might pull them out in a doctor's office while we're waiting, or dentist's office, or some other place when we have a little time and maybe just have uh, the opportunity of going over one prayer uh, in the book and maybe uh, you can, you have it outlined also so that they can quickly look down to see which one they want to go to and what might be their particular focus at the time. Well, in, in, in the invitation to prayer, what we did was we, uh, I placed them all alphabetically so that in, in, in the 95 areas that she could that she could uh, find something that fits her needs for the moment. And then with each prayer, there was a scripture. I know. It's because God's word speaks to our spirit and to our hearts. And God, you know, I always believe that God has the answer to everything. Seek it and you'll find it in his word. And so what I tried to do was to enlighten it with a scripture from the, from the word of God. And then also then to draw them in with a little short prayer and hopefully quicken their spirit to go deeper. I always believe that God wants us to go deeper in our relationship with Him. You know, God wants us, wants our presence. He wants us to be present with Him and Him with us on a day by day and a moment by moment basis. And hopefully this little book will help them do that. Well, and I have seen the little book and I know exactly what you're talking about. I've gone through it and I feel for sure that, that it will. Um, prayer and the Word go together. You did that so beautifully in the book. If you get into the Word, you're going to pray. And if you pray, guess what? It's going to lead you back to the Word, That's isn't right. it? Uh, they go hand in hand. hand you know, in glove, and, yes. And to realize that God loves us uh, unconditionally, as you so aptly said so many times. And he, and he loves us exactly where we are in life. You know, we're not all perfect, you know. No. We, we sin and need forgiveness every day. But God loves us anyway. And he wants to shower his love and blessings upon us. So uh, I just, uh, I had a lot of fun with this book and, I and bet creating you it. You did. And then we're going, we're going out for a break. We're going to come back and talk about time with God for mothers. So you got two winners here, and um, we'll be right back. To prepare this message, I pulled out a few of the cards and notes my children, and especially my daughters, have given me through the years. They revealed the following, their love and appreciation for me, for what I had done for them and what I had taught them. Then there were references to the sacrifices of my life and time in caring for them. They made me aware that I have served as a role model, giving them strong and appropriate guidance. They shared their gratitude for having me to turn to when they needed a shoulder to cry on or someone to simply listen. They also revealed their need to be loved and to feel safe and secure. They related how much it meant to them to be trusted, to try their wings by being allowed to make certain decisions on their own. They have verbally expressed special appreciation for hearing me pray when they were young children. Children need and expect a lot from their moms, but can be very forgiving when we fail to measure up 
to their expectations. Effective motherhood requires that we love, give, do and sacrifice to provide our children with a safe and secure harbor to sail in and out of as they cruise the ocean of life. But it also demands that we instill biblical truths and principles and live both out before them on a daily basis. To do this, we must make time to imbibe the exhortations and promises found in the Word of God and spend time in prayer soliciting the help of the Holy Spirit to believe and practice them in our daily lives. I remember a young woman relating to me, since my father passed away, my mom has gone wild and is doing all the things she taught us not to do. This young woman was brokenhearted as she described her mother's shameful behavior. Instead of her mom providing a safe and secure stronghold in her life, she had left her daughter to flounder around, looking for something or someone to hang on to. May we mothers resolve to follow and imitate Jesus Christ all the days of our lives to such a degree that our children will never have reason to doubt our love for Him nor them. The scriptures relate when we do this that our children will rise up and call us blessed. We always appreciate you joining us on Time for Hope. Our guest for today is Jack Countryman, and we're talking about two of his books, one having to do with prayers for mothers and then one having to do with time spent with the Lord for mothers. I think I said that okay, didn't I, Jack? Yes, you did. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> talked about your two books, and we've already talked about The Invitation to Prayer. That was the title of the book on prayer, An Invitation to Prayer for Mothers. I highly recommend it and encourage mothers uh, to make sure they get a copy. And then the one that is... Uh, Time with God for yeah, Mothers. Bestseller. Is this the one yes, that's the that's bestseller, bestseller now? Time with God for Mothers. And you've made it so that if they don't have very much time, they can still uh, you sit know, down quickly or grab it quickly and, and get a scripture and then some thoughts on it. I so much want to encourage mothers. You know, their, their, their lives are hectic. Kids going to school, kids having to be taken care of, getting dad off to work, or maybe working themselves. And oftentimes their time is just so busy. But I want to encourage mothers to take a moment, just a couple of minutes as they start the day with the Lord. Draw the Lord into your life so that He will have His presence as you go around the things and your responsibilities that you have. You know, I, I want to encourage a closer walk with God. His desire is to be involved in a mother's life every day, moment by moment, with the decisions that she makes and the things that she goes through. He wants to be a part of that life. And I chose 90 little devotionals that she could quickly read in a minute or two, spend a little quiet time, and reflect on her day and the fact that God is going to be walking with her. God is going to be uh, with her in everything that she says and everything that she does. Uh, I, I, I capitalize on such things as the joy of faith, the life lessons that she will learn, the blessings of being a servant of the Lord and of her family and of her children, you know. And God promises things like a new heart for her because she will face certain challenges in life where she will need a new heart. Or a mended heart for yes, a broken heart. Yes, right. right. And, you know, and God wants her to be a godly mother, you know. And um, after all, she is priceless. She is priceless in God's eyes because God has chosen her to be the mother of her children and to be the wife of her husband, or sometimes just to be the mother of her children because she may not have a husband, and that goes on in life. Or she may be the mother of an adopted child, or she may be a foster mother, but she has the responsibility of being a mother. 
or mentoring other mo younger uh, mothers. Absolutely. He says that the older women are That's to right, you mentor, know, and as she, it were. The, and she may be uh, a, a grandmother, and, and, and you know, she may want to be a mentor to other mothers and do things. So what I've tried to deal with here is to give her a time to reflect on who she is and what her responsibilities are and the joy of her walk with the Lord and how that uh, should be a, such a wonderful part of her life. I also take a time to talk about the character of a mother and the, uh, the essential things that she needs to understand from both Scripture, because here we have Scripture, and as well as the quiet time, that uh, her character is very, very important. So in, the, in that regard, I think that uh, uh, you know, in, in God's eyes and in her own eyes, she is beautiful forever, both inside and out. If we study Proverbs 31, we get the picture of what you're, what you're really saying and what uh, you're talking about. But, uh, you know, many mothers, Jack, are, as it were, running on empty. That's right. Uh, they have given out, given out, and especially working mothers, and maybe maybe their husband is not, uh, you know, partnering with them in the parenting, or maybe he's too involved in his work, his vocation, his career. And what you've done with your books, um, and what can be done if they will take advantage of just even these little short times with the Lord, they can fuel up as it were, they can refuel so that they have something to give to their children. If they are running on empty, what's going to happen to their children? Well, you've hit the nail right on the head. I want to help them fill the tank. I want to help them with, with a few kind words. You know, the one essential thing that every woman or every mother wants is to be appreciated. Just to be appreciated for what she does and who she is. Significant. And significant. We, we all have a de need and desire for significance. That's right. And so what I've tried to do here, to let them know that the Lord truly thinks they're significant through His Word. And then just give them a few little words of encouragement because they need that essential encouragement to say, I can take this, I can do this, I can be what God wants me to be, you know? because there are going to be ups and downs and there are going to be challenges because frankly that's just part of life we all have to face. So hopefully in this little 90-day devotional I've given them the essentials that will help them go through and manage. In the back of the book I've also enlightened them with certain mother's prayers in the Bible and the scripture that speaks to the responsibility of motherhood and the promises of motherhood. Great promises. You know, one of the things I really like uh, about being a woman and a mother and is the fact that so many blame Eve forever for what she did in the Garden of Eden. And the Lord made, you know, to make sure that that was not His perspective. In the New Testament, we are told that she in other words, can be recovered, restored through childbearing. She got to bring forth the Redeemer. Right. I mean, what higher privilege could be given to a woman uh, than to bring forth the Christ child? Absolutely. You know, Marcia and I have been married 45 years. And I've, I've discovered over the years, it took me a while, but I've discovered over the years that her wisdom, her insight, has been such a, an essential thing to everyone in our family. You know, she is truly the anchor of our family. We speak to our boys every day. Marcia calls her boys every day. They're 38 years old and 43 years old, but we speak to them every day, and they are attached to us, and they will always be her children. Forever. Great way to go out. Thank you so much for that. And uh, so, as always, I think you've, uh, you know, you've hit the nail on the head. And uh, I appreciate all that you've said. And I'm sure the mothers out there will. And I encourage them to get your uh, second book, Time with God uh, for Mothers. And Thank look you forward so much, to Shannon. bringing you back again, Jack, That's when you roll some more books out. And uh, I want to make sure that you join us again next week on Time for Hope.
I have been told by people who know me that I look happiest when I'm doing the Time for Hope show. And in a way, this is true, because when I'm doing the show, I'm doing what God has called me to do. And when I receive letters such as the one I'm going to share with you, it makes me sad and happy at the same time. Sad because of the situations that people find themselves in and happy because they will share their prayer requests with us and ha happy knowing that God is concerned and that we can take these prayer requests to our Heavenly Father. Dear Dr. Frieda, my husband has been cheating on me. That is a very painful experience for a woman. I am trying to forgive him and move forward, and that's a difficult thing for a woman to do also. I don't want my marriage to end, and again, I understand this woman wants to keep her marriage in spite of the fact that her husband is cheating on her. He is coming into town this week and says he is going to file for divorce, and she probably has been fearing this is going to happen. I do not want this. Please pray for our marriage, and we're more than happy to do uh, that, to answer her request, to pray for her marriage, hoping that God will turn the situation around. He will have to change the husband's heart and life for this marriage to be saved. We've taken this request to our Heavenly Father. We take these requests very seriously. If you haven't shared your prayer request with us, we encourage you and invite you to do so. At the same time, I've already mentioned that this is God's calling on my life, and the ministry of time for hope is one that impacts lives, and then we hear changes lives. That's our mission. That's our vision. And sharing that with you, I would hope that you can get that vision also, and that you would be encouraged to help us carry out the mission and the ministry of Time for Hope by helping us financially. With more financial help, we can reach more people. We're already meeting, reaching potentially millions of viewers each week. And with your financial help, we can reach them and more. So I encourage you to take this ministry seriously and share your financial help with us. A free fact sheet that contains additional information about today's topic is available upon request from our ministry. You can also receive copies of today's resources for a contribution of any amount to the Time for Hope ministry. You may call us at 800-669-9133. Write us at Post Office Box 2169, Spartanburg, South Carolina, 29304. Or visit our website at timeforhope.org. Join us next week on Time for Hope as Dr. Cruz discusses another insightful topic. Until next time, have a great week. And remember, it is time for hope.